everybody, it's great to be here. I'm Juliana, I'm a product manager at Intuit focused on sales enablement. The long and short of my job is that I arm our sales team with all they need to know about Intuit Enterprise Suite so they can speak to what it offers confidently. Intuit Enterprise Suite, or what we like to call IES, launched about 14 months ago. In the time it's been on the market and in the hands of our customers, we've seen and heard firsthand how it brings more efficiency, cost savings, and confidence in decision making than our customers could have ever imagined. As you probably know, Intuit has a long track record of helping our customers solve their biggest business problems. We've got about 40 years of experience. We've helped 8 million businesses and counting, all starting with Quicken. Through the years, we've built multiple products, leading us to Intuit Enterprise Suite today. As a platform, IES is unique in several ways. First, it's AI powered meaning AI and automations are used to take action on behalf of our users and customers, meaning less work for them. I'll show you how this comes to life a little bit in my demo shortly. IES also has the ability to integrate seamlessly with payroll, HR, time, payments, uh, business intelligence, marketing capabilities, all in one singular place. This means less switching between systems and no need to pull data together in spreadsheets, as I'm sure many of you have done before, saving you tons of time and leading to more seamless exponential growth of your bottom line. IES also makes it possible for businesses with multiple entities to bring all of their businesses and financial data together. Whether you've got, let's say three entities, 150, I think I met a customer last week who had around 400 singular businesses. IES supports them and can support you in rolling up all of your invoices, expenses, payroll data, financial forecasting automatically into one singular place. Those benefits continue to compound over time with our quarterly release cadence. So every single quarter, the IES team releases new features and functionality within the product, increasing your return on investment and ensuring that the capabilities you asked for that you need to drive that efficiency and make better decisions are delivered straight to you through into an enterprise suite. But I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't give you the opportunity to assess these benefits for yourself. So uh, I'm also from the Midwest, born and raised in Chicago, and in the Midwest, we do like to say, it's not what you say, it's what you do. So with that, let's jump into a quick demo. So I'm gonna be demoing through the eyes of a company called Keystone Construction today. It's a US-based construction firm made up of three entities, which you can see on the screen. We've got Keystone Construction, the parent company, Keystone Terra, and Keystone Bluecraft, which are the two uh, entities under that parent company. Logging into IES, like I just did, you'll notice that all of Keystone Construction's entities available in the menu option here, as well as a consolidated view. With IES, you can easily and quickly access any of these entities. You can jump into uh, any of the singular ones or have the ability to see across all of them in one rolled up view through the consolidated view. Before IES, customers had to spend countless hours of every month managing, accounting for, and reporting on all the different entities within their organization. That's no longer needed. Let's jump into the consolidated view so I can show you. Let it load here for a second. Um, so upon jumping in, right, we have business at a glance. We also have these tiles that are gonna show us our AP expenses, profit and loss, total income, everything that you really need to see at a glance across every single one of your entities. So right, this is gonna be the construction company, the Terra company, the Bluecraft company combined together for that very consolidated view. If I go up here, click on Consolidated View, this is the drop-down menu that allows you to seamlessly move between each of these entities. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm gonna jump into Keystone Terra. And we are going to move on to projects and a functionality that we call dimensions or categorizations and how you can apply those categorizations to your various uh, project transactions. So over here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna to go to My Apps, we're gonna to go to Projects, I'm gonna quickly go to the Overview page. So this page gives you a high-level view of all of your projects together, right? So we've got our estimates versus actual income, project expenses of every single project within your business. Now let's say we wanna jump specifically into one project versus looking at all of them rolled up. We're gonna go back to that left-hand menu, click on Projects, and here we're gonna see a list of all of our projects together. Uh, for each of our projects, we've got the money in and the money out here uh, against each of the projects themselves. Um, there's also a lot of projects in this list. We're a very fortunate business. We've got a lot going on. Um, and so we have the uh, search functionality and the filter functionality at the top of the page that are gonna be really useful in finding the exact project that I wanna click into. 
Um, let's click into the first one, Azure Pines Playground Construction Project, just so I can show you around a little bit. We can see the full summary of the project performance at a high level, or we can actually click into each of our transactions, invoices, bills, and expenses associated and connected to this specific project. Um, so here we're in the summary view. We can see the project summary balance. We've also got tasks for your team, so you can assign various tasks and help people track what they're getting done. And then as I mentioned, we've got the transactions tab where we can see all of those transactions. I'm gonna jump into this invoice and show you around a little bit. So typical invoice, what you would expect, uh, you know, we've got the name of the company, contact information, who it's billed to. Um, but what I really wanna show you is down here, when we get to the product or service line items, over on the right-hand side, we have two columns, um, class and customer type. And these are where you can apply those categorizations or metadata to each of your transactions. Um, that the metadata and the categorizations are what we call dimensions, and those are unique to IES. Oftentimes when I'm doing a big demo, I always like to ask who's familiar with QBO. I get a lot of hand raises, and at this point in the demo, I like to say uh, in QBO, we call these categorizations classes. In IES, we're calling them dimensions. Um, so within, uh, if, if you're using the class terminology in QBO, you can kind of think of the dimensions as multiple class categories. So uh, now that I've kind of explained what dimensions are, I'm actually gonna show you how we can create them. So I'm gonna go into this gear icon. Under lists, we have dimensions. Cool, and this brings us to our dimensions homepage. Here you can create up to 20 dimensions or categorizations with five levels of nesting. So if I go into customer type, we can see you know, the level one dimension is commercial and then we have some subcategories here as well. Um, and each of these levels can be applied to any transaction manually or automatically uh, through our dimension assignment feature. So dimension assignment uses AI to auto categorize product services and fixed assets based on your previous transaction information. Um, I'm gonna go up here, click on dimension assignments so we can check it out together. And let's take uh, this first line item. It's the raised garden bed product. Based on my previous transactions, AI is categorizing it as a, res as a residential customer type. So, um, oh, I think we already actually approved the raised garden bed. So we're gonna go to 6450 slide product name, this first line here. If we go over to the right hand side, we can see the customer type is residential. If I click in, we should be given a drop down. So the system is categorizing this product as residential, but let's say I actually think, you know, it's a government uh, project or it's a commercial project. I can change that to anything that I want. Uh, this dropdown is going to contain all of the dimensional categorizations that I have in the system right at my disposal here. And then once I'm happy with whatever I've changed this to, I can confirm. And that is basically telling the system once I confirm any time that specific product or service or fixed asset is included on a transaction, it will be auto-categorized as whatever I just confirmed here. So in this case, it'll be auto-categorized as a residential customer type. This means I don't have to go through every single line item or every single time this shows up on a transaction and categorize it myself. The system is doing that for me. That is saving tons and tons of time and hours. If you are somebody who has done this work before, you know how tedious and manual this can be. Um, and this is really the, the beauty of AI, which I know is all the rage right now, uh, but really for good reason, right? It's really helping us become more efficient in terms of the work that we're doing. All right, last thing I'm gonna show you uh, is uh, how we can use uh, the metadata, the categorization information to understand business performance and make better business decisions. So if we actually navigate to the reports over here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna click in. Um, and you can see as I hover here under reports, we've just got a slew of different report types. We've got the standard report, so that's gonna be you know, your profit and loss, your balance sheet, um, sort of the, the typical report suspects you would expect to see in a product like this. We also have custom reports, and this is where you can actually come in and figure out what is the exact information or intersections of information that you wanna create in a report. Um, one of my favorite report types is actually going to be the profit and loss by dimensions, those categorizations that we just talked about, um, and the dimension that we're talking about in this report specifically is going to be concrete type. 
So I click on this report, it opens up for me, and let's get oriented a little bit. So this is a traditional profit and loss statement, but you'll see across the top, we have the dimensions uh, or the categorizations that we want to break this profit and loss down by. So we can see you know, the concrete block foundations, total income for that versus the poured concrete foundations, versus the slab foundations. And so this is gonna give us that comparative view so we can see you know, which of these foundation types is going to be the most profitable for my business or really creating a profit and loss by any dimensional category that makes the most sense for you. Um, next, let's move over to the management report, which is going to allow you to package up your financial reports and make it easy to format and customize specific to your business without pulling data into PowerPoint or other programs to make your reporting CEO and board ready. So let's jump out of here. Let's just go back to reports. We can go to management reports, click on that. We don't have any management reports created yet, so let's actually create one together. I'm gonna go up here to create report. Let's click on annual financial summary. And again, this is a suggested management report that the system is creating for you. And it is automatically pulling all of this information together that is available in the platform. You can see the outline with sort of a table of contents over here. Uh, we've got the executive AI generated summary for you. We've got uh, KPIs, you know, whatever custom KPIs are specific to your business, uh, profitability charts, cash flow, liquidity charts, financial statements, and you can change this information in your report at any given time. You can add sections, you can remove sections, you can fine tune the content yourself. You can also invite others to help you fine tune that content too. Um, so it's really empowering you to create reporting for your management team, your leadership, your board, in a way that is not only visually appealing, but really easy to understand. Um, because of course, it's important what the system can do inside of itself uh, to you know, manage your financials, but we also wanna make sure that we're empowering you and supporting you in pulling the information out of the system and sending it to the leaders uh, that really need to be able to intake that information themselves. Um, all right, I'm gonna pause there. there